do want to get back into the headlines right here in a story that we brought you as breaking news yesterday. This is out of Florida where six people were killed and another person was critically injured after a train and an SUV collided. It happened in Plant City, Florida, about 25 miles east of Tampa. I want to bring in Regina Gonzalez with our Fox 13 Tampa team and a familiar face here at Live Now from Fox. She does have the latest on the developments here. Regina, thank you so much for being here. A very tragic story. Yeah, this is certainly a tough one, Josh. Good morning to you and all your viewers. Right now, I can tell you that this lone survivor here, his name is Guillermo Gama. He's 23 years old, and right now, fighting for his life is the understatement. He is inside Lakeland Regional Medical Center, where I'm standing in front of right now. His family tells me that he was still in critical condition as of late last night. And just to name a few of the injuries he is battling, you're talking brain bleeding and swelling, ruptured kidneys and a broken arm and broken hand. So you can just imagine his family's pain as right now they just hope and pray that he can recover from this and continue on with his life that he was just getting a head start in. Now, since this crash happened, we've learned that Guillermo was one of seven people in a Cadillac SUV heading to a quinceanera, which is a very big 15th birthday celebration for Latino women. His 22-year-old girlfriend, Anelia Hernandez, her parents and her two younger siblings, as well as their 17-year-old family friend who was friends with the siblings, were also in the truck. Her father, Jose, was driving and Guillermo was in the passenger seat. Hillsborough County Sheriff Chad Cronister said just before 7 p.m. Saturday, their truck was at a private railroad crossing on US 92 near Jim Leffler Circle in Plan City, right near the party venue. He says the car went slowly across the railroad tracks but never stopped for the oncoming train, and right now investigators aren't sure why. The train conductor signaled horns and flashing lights and did everything he could to stop, but the SUV didn't move and the train hit them going 55 miles per hour. Sheriff Chronister said when deputies arrived, the car looked like a soda can that had been stepped on and smashed. Now, some neighbors, including Guillermo's own aunt, have expressed the need for more safety measures at this crossing and said there's been at least one deadly train car collision here before. As of now, there is only a stop sign, and since the crossing is on a private road, no other safety measures are technically required. So we're looking more into that. Now, nobody on the train was hurt, and CSX, the train company, did release a full statement over the weekend offering their condolences to these families and saying that they will absolutely cooperate with law enforcement as this investigation continues. Meanwhile, as we learn more about all of these people involved, we know Guillermo, who is still in there fighting for his life, that he was going to college to study nursing while also working full time in construction. A fundraiser has been set up to help with his medical expenses and that can be found on our website, fox13news.com. And Regina, so my understanding, and you kind of touched on this, is that there's no, I guess, arms there at the railroad tracks to make people stop when a train is coming, is that correct? Yeah, that is definitely what we are trying to learn more about from this point. I understand you're going to be speaking with the sheriff later. We have reached out to his team to see just how many collisions have happened here in the past. But when speaking with Guillermo's aunt, actually, she said that at least one person has died from being in a car and getting hit by a train at this railroad crossing. It is apparently on a private property. So experts, like I mentioned, are saying that Railroad crossing arms are not necessarily needed or required, that only a stop sign is fine, but obviously the huge question is what can be done so that way this never happens again. All right, Regina Gonzalez there with our Fox 13 Tampa team, a very sad story. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us and we'll definitely be in touch to get the latest information. The latest now on this tragic story that we have been following out of Florida. Six people killed and another person critically injured after a train and an SUV collided. It happened over the weekend in Plant City, which is about 25 miles east of Tampa. 
Chief Deputy Joseph Maurer with the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office joins us now live to talk more about the investigation here. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us this morning. As I mentioned, this is obviously a very tragic situation and now you have an investigation. But again, thank you for being here. Well, thank you, sir. On behalf of Sheriff Chad Chronister, it is my honor to be on your show this morning. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. So first off, can you tell me what we know so far about how this played out and how it happened? Yes, sir. I'll give you a, a brief timeline of the of the tragic incident that occurred Saturday night. So at 648 p.m. on Saturday night, seven people, five family members and two friends were heading to a birthday party. Jose Hernandez was driving his 2020 Cadillac Escalade southbound on Jim Leffler Circle from US Highway 92, approaching a railroad crossing controlled by a stop sign and a railroad crossing sign. Hernandez had six other passengers in the Escalade, including his wife, two juvenile children, an adult child, and two friends of the family. For unknown and undetermined reasons, the driver slowly crossed the tracks in the train's path. Five rear passengers were ejected from the Escalade as it rotated and rolled to final rest. The five ejected passengers died at the scene. The driver and front passenger were transported to a local hospital. The driver later passed away due to his injuries. The front passenger is in critical condition, but is expected to survive. At this point, I'd like to thank Hillsborough County Fire Rescue for their assistance during this investigation, and then also CSX during this incident as well. What do we know about the victims? Again, six people killed, one person critically injured. What do we know about these people? Yes, sir. Well, this is a very tragic incident. A family from Hillsborough County is now decimated. So I can tell you some of the, their ages and their names. The husband, wife, and their three children, ages 9, 17, and 22, also were accompanied by two friends of their children. Their ages were 17 and 23. The deceased, as I said earlier, um, the driver, Jose Hernandez, age 52, rear passenger, and Adelia Hernandez, age 50, rear passenger, Jacob Lopez, age 17, rear passenger, Alyssa Hernandez, age 17, rear passenger, Ana Elia Hernandez, 22, and then lastly, Julian Hernandez, age nine, extremely tragic. And then the survivor is the front passenger, Guillermo Gama, age 23. Do we know how he's doing, the survivor of this crash? We know that he was listed in critical condition at one point. Has he shown any signs of improvement? Yes, sir. He is in critical condition, but his, the outcome is positive. I'll give you a breakdown of some of his injuries, and they are quite severe. Um, he's intubated. He is suffering from a brain bleed, ruptured kidney, and bruised lung. Very, very uh, difficult injuries and extreme injuries, as you can see but uh, the outlook look, looks very positive for him as of this morning, sir. I wanna talk a little bit more about the railroad crossing there. Does it have arms that go down when you have a train that is approaching? Because a lot of people in that area have spoken about this and said that it can be a dangerous location. Does it have those arms that come down? Unfortunately, at that at that railroad crossing, sir, it does not. It has simply a stop sign and a railroad crossing sign. No arms that we typically see in major intersections. Can you tell me about the area where all of this did happen? Is it a pretty quiet area? Is it heavily traveled? No, it is a very quiet area. It is a residential area. So that specific side street goes into a neighborhood with, with a few homes. Now, U.S. Highway 92 is a major thoroughfare, but in that area, it's not traveled very frequently, sir. How difficult is it for your office to work a situation like this? Because we heard from Sheriff Chronister just yesterday, and he was clearly very torn up about it and was very emotional as he described it all. Still, of course, uh, maintaining his composure, but you could tell that he was impacted by it. How do you go about investigating something that is this tragic? Well, this is a very critical incident for all of us. You know, we, we, we take this, this oath of being protectors of the community. And, and this one 
we we really couldn't protect the community until till after the fact and, I, and i'll explain what i mean by that so when we arrived and we had bodies you know across the you know across the area and we we want to help them as best we can but they were deceased on scene so then what happens is then we find the two the driver and the pat and the front passenger still in the vehicle and we were able to extricate them both unfortunately we were i mean those two the front the driver and the front passenger were taken to the hospital the driver succumbed to his injuries and passed away however we were able to save one and that's that's a testament to our deputies now dealing with death on 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 a on a daily basis that's something that law enforcement we 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 are trained to do what sheriff chronister and the hillsborough county sheriff's office does better than anyone that i know is that we have victim specialists for these type of incidents so we are able to assist families in need friends in need i mean we had families showing up to the scene families showing up to the hospital it was a very chaotic scene those victim specialists bring calm to the storm and we help the community grieve in a manner to work forward and have some sort of closure to this the best we can where does the investigation go from here what comes next well, right now, so our detectives are looking to find, to determine the factor of how and what caused this type of accident. Why did the driver slow roll in front of the train? Was it distraction? Was it a medical issue? That's, that's what our detectives are trying to determine as we speak right now. Now, CSX will conduct their own independent investigation on, on you know, the use of maybe Maybe now we have railroad crossing arms at that at that uh, railroad crossing. That's their investigation to determine. Ours right now is to determine what caused this, and we are diligently trying to find that out, sir. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us here. Again, our thoughts, our prayers are with you all right now as you are working this. Six people killed, one critically injured. Anything you want to add about this before I let you go? No, I want to thank you for the opportunity again on behalf of Sheriff Chad Cronister. Thank you for allowing us to speak about this. This is a devastating uh, incident that occurred in our community. Our job is to, to protect the community and keep everyone safe. And we do that in our reduction of crime here. Um, but this is a senseless tragedy that really didn't have to happen. And we just want to find that out and moving forward, trying to give um, some closure to the family. The Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office will stand by its community no matter what. Chief Deputy Joseph Maurer there with the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. Thank you again for taking the time to be here. Thank you, sir. Have a wonderful day. You too.